You have probably heard the saying, a bad work person blames their tools. Well, in this video, I am going to share with you the tools I use to prepare and run my weekly RPG session online. Hello and welcome back to another video. If you're not sure who I am, my name's Inwills and I am a content creator and streamer based in the United Kingdom who produces content to help you unlock your potential through productivity, successful streaming, creative campaigns and positivity. This is a gibbering GM video where I look at certain aspects of GMing across a range of games. So what are the tools that I use to prepare and run my RPG games online? Well, let's get straight to it. First up, World Anvil. And I can honestly say this is probably the best tool that I have in my toolkit. Why? Well, it's where I store all my campaign ideas, my notes, my organizations, my NPCs, my adventures, you name it, it is logged and stored in World Anvil. Now, the program is accessed via web browsers, so as long as you have internet connection, you can access it on mobile devices, desktop or laptops. The site uses articles that will link to each other. So if I'm detailing an NPC and I've written an article about it, then whenever I mention that NPC in another article, it will automatically link back to the original article, if that makes sense. There was a lot of articles there, but I think you'll get the idea. This means that Everything in my campaign is linked together and with one click or sometimes just a hover over the name, I can be reminded of an organization or what the NPC has done in the past. It's fantastic. It really is. Um, yeah. And if you are interested in seeing how World Anvil could work for you, then I have a couple of videos about it and I'll pop it in the description below. Second has to be the fantastic Roll20. So this is my virtual tabletop of choice. When I started to GM online, I tried a variety of virtual tabletops and actually chose or decided that Roll20 was the best for me and the main game I play, which is Mithras. One of the reasons for this is that Roll20 has a Mithras character sheet and which works perfectly. And then we use the same sheet for M Space and Destined. Destined is the new superhero um, rule set for Mithras. Of course, it also has all the D&D 5th edition books and resources there, so I can use those as well. As well as dealing with all the dice rolls in the game, it has a turn order that I've adapted slightly for Mithras, so it has combat rounds and turns. And we use tokens that can be placed to provide tech Tactical, I, um, tactical information of where characters are and the dynamic lighting is absolutely fantastic and we can really immerse the players into the game. There's also um, sound effects and music and well, it's absolutely amazing. Now, as well as Roll20 and everything that it provides, it also has an excellent marketplace where you can buy maps and tokens for your campaign. Whenever I have an idea for a setting, I, am, I can guarantee that when I search the marketplace, there will be a map pack that I can buy, usually for $4.99. That means once I've done that, the maps are created and ready for me to use. And for other games like D&D 5th Edition, there's complete modules so you can access everything that you need to know inside Roll20. Um, yeah, I do hope for some Mithras modules soon on Roll20, so hope somebody out there is listing 
and get creating, please get creating. And don't forget to stay right to the end of this video where I'm going to share with you some of my favorite map creators on World 20. OK, so the next um, tool in my toolkit is actually very specific to Mithras and it's called Mithras Encounters. Now, this is a website that allows you to search for an opponent for the party, whether or not that be a monster or a human body. It's actually it's completely full of really interesting opponents. Now, as well as providing a range of monsters or similar monsters, for example, if you want to have a, a bandit, it will provide you with a range of bandits that you can actually print out or just use in your game. But it also has the ability um, to export from the site directly into Roll20. So this allows me to have all the monster stats instantly at my fingers as well as this it gives all the relevant skills and abilities and plus there is a mooc option and i have no idea what mooc stands for so if you know let me know in the comments and this allows me to have multiples of the same monster so if i want to have six bandits um, beforehand, I actually used to make six bandits with sep separate character sheets to use in the game. But now, um, the end of the bandit sheet in World 20 will have six options for me. And I just number the tokens one to six on World 20. And therefore, I can track their action points, their... Um, their fatigue, their conditions, or their hit points in various location. Yeah, so using the, the new MOOC system, I can have a, bang, a gang of bandits, 12 of them, no problem at all. So next up is probably the only physical tool that I actually use. And again, specifically for Mithras, they are the Mithras combat cards. Now, I've created a video on these and so you can look at that yourself, but I really think they are a great addition to my GM toolkit. When I have one big monster on an opponent that is, you know, a major boss, I stand the action point cards um, on my keyboard so I can track how many action points I've used. And I also use a counter on a condition card that allows me to see whether or not my main boss is fatigued or blinded. These are, I use them especially for big bosses when the combat is going to last some time. However, the main use of my combat cards are for the combat specials. They're all in there, they're color coded and they're quick and easy to reach for. And I know that, that they'll be in there. So if a character or player says they want to use something, it's a quick reference card that I can have out and quickly see what roles I have to make as a GM. They're easy to read and yeah, they're really, really um, good quality and I use them in every single game. And finally, there. this is one of the, um, I probably cheated with this because I want to call the final one online documents. So this covers a range of documentation that I use within my sessions. Some of them are tables that I've created for myself, such as the different wounds categories and what you need to roll or healing rates. And others are some that I found online and I've shared with the players. The one about combat specials and dice rolling and shaping points is extremely useful. And I strongly recommend that if you have sorcerers or a lot of combat in your Mithras campaign that you definitely get hold of it and use it throughout. Um, yeah, I have to admit that this was a great find and the players like it as well. So I'll link it down below and well done to the people who created it. 
thank you for getting to this part in the video and I promise you that I would share with you my favourite producer map on Roll20 and it has to be Gabriel Picard. Um, I'll leave a link to all their um, resources online but if you're using Roll20 these maps are fantastic, so well produced, so clear, and yet yeah, we use it all the time. So I would definitely recommend them as a creator for you to check out. And that's it. My favourite tools in my toolkit for GMing a game online well, especially Mithras. If you'd like to know more about any of these tools, then do let me know in the comments below and I'll add all the relevant links to things that I've talked about in this video in the description. If you have found this or any of the videos on my channel helpful, then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. It really does help me and the channel. So thank you for doing that. Until next time, happy gaming, everyone. Enjoy. See ya. Bye.